Hey everyone, we're going to take our uh, first sneak peek look at the GS Pro Golf Simulator software. Um, and I'm going to be powering it today by the Foresight Sports GC Quad. So, um, exciting piece of software. I haven't uh, had a close look at it before inside my simulator bay. Uh, it is a new install. It's um, currently in beta version, um, beta testing right now. So there is some uh, little quirks here and there. but. Um, so far, so good. Pleasantly surprised with uh, the quality of the, the gameplay, the settings, um, ball flight tracking. One thing worth noting is um, all of the uh, ball physics, uh, the algorithms are coming off of the launch monitor. So that's a, a really nice feature compared to some of the other third party software out there. Um, a little bit of background on GS Pro. If you guys are familiar with Jack, Jack Nicholson uh, Perfect Golf, this would be the developers from Jack Nicholson Perfect Golf. So um, Trackman at one point in time has taken over and bought Jack Nicholson Perfect Golf and obviously the developers have now created uh, GS Pro and currently uh, in beta testing. So there's just a little bit of information on that. Um, I figured today I would keep the video quite short, just a sneak peek, just to have a look at what the graphics are all about, what the gameplay is. Uh, at a later date I'll get into a full course review and we'll get into the details on some of the settings um, outside of what I'm going to talk about here today. But to start out, we're on practice mode inside of a, a golf course and I picked TPC Scottsdale, the stadium course, and of course we're going to hit uh, on the par 3 the famous stadium uh, number 16. So we'll take a look at that hole and um, we'll talk about a, a few of the settings along the way. So I've got um, just kind of default settings set up right now and I've already chosen so we can go and choose all front nine. But basically when I got to this setting all holes were chosen. I'm going to come in, unselect the back nine, unselect the front nine, and I'm just going to pick one hole to practice on. Um, stroke play, championship tees, firm dreary, firm greens, no wind, da 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 da. So let's get into it and see where this pin location is. So one thing I noticed when I was taking a look at this earlier today, and I'm just going to turn on the mini map for a second. is um oops, sorry. Is there's no actual distance to the hole anywhere inside of the game so I had to go find it on the actual mini map itself which is weird it's a little bit of a weird setting not to have that inside the practice mode but when you are inside of course mode or normal gameplay um, of course, up in the top hand corner where your score and your name is, uh, it does have the total distance to the pin or um, your second shot, etc. It is uh, labeled in there. So, one little weird thing I found on the practice holes. But a pretty unique feature that um, a lot of people talk about is the ability to go inside of the tee box and move the ball from left to right, right to left. So, that's a pretty unique option. Definitely thought that was pretty cool. Um, there's not a lot of simulator software out there where you can move the ball position around inside the tee box. So pretty cool. Um, a few of the other settings that we can quickly look at is uh, shortcuts on the keyboard. So I'll just turn my camera off here for a second so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So inside the um, settings, we can get into strengthening the sunlight so we can strengthen to the point it looks ridiculous and washed out to pretty much dark. So this is a good feature for depending on your monitors, depending on your projector, your impact screen, whatever it might be. You can adjust the settings to the liking for yourself and uh, for what you use on your gameplay. Also the sun light time of day. So we can start moving the shadows around and there we get into 7 o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden the shadows are from the stadium over here getting uh, across the tee box. So as we move it out further closer to noon, it gets nice and bright out and the shadows start moving. So pretty cool feature. Of course you can adjust the saturation and make it as green as you possibly want. And of course we're always trying to pick a, a more realistic color for the fairways, for the tee boxes, the, the greens, the putting greens, etc. Um, the skybox brightness, 
so we can go right out into the skylight over top of those mountains and, and select the brightness and we can go all the way to pitch black which is a, a pretty ni nice look actually. I don't mind it like that instead of seeing the skylights and the clouds in the background but I'm going to turn them on slightly. Of course we can adjust the bunker darkness. I won't do it since we're not looking at a bunker. You have the um, environment and you have the environmental color and when you have everything set up and everything's happy and you're happy with the settings you can come in here and just hit save and exit. So pretty unique feature and you can do that inside of gameplay, online gameplay, you can change that on any hole anytime you want. So really, really unique feature. Um, let's get in and hit a, hit a couple shots here. So for this pin location you can see on the mini map that I'm at the tournament tees. So right at the back tees on this par 3. It's playing about 170, 70 plus yards. Um, pin is in that back right hand corner. Um, I'm opting to hit a 7 iron and you can see the club selection down in the bottom corner here and we can go in here and pick 7 iron uh, currently sitting on right hand and I'm going to turn my camera back on. So for this particular shot here I'm going to try to hit that nice little cut to the back corner and see if we can get one somewhere in there close so here we go. Get a little bit to the right. Yeah. Not a bad shot, nice little fade. Hit it a bit too hard, and I needed a little more cut to that. So, see if we can get another one in there a little closer than that. That one might be to the right side of the flag. for two, not a great start. That one's not too bad if it's the right distance. Yeah, it left us with a putt, so um, so far so good. The ball flight really good and again we're using the uh, algorithm from the launch one or the GC quad. So we expect to have uh, good care ball characteristics. So that is all fine and dandy. Shot is pretty much instant from the time it hits the impact screen, like all of that. We do have um, a few settings up in the top left hand corner here. Um, the tree function, it actually is a, a future uh, purpose for this button. It actually doesn't do anything. Um, we do have a replay here and it's just gonna replay the last shot and that's the last shot that I just hit from the re replay button. I believe the camera up in the corner here, yeah, that doesn't do anything either. And this green, um, basically this is the holes of all 18 holes on the golf course. You're supposed to be able to come in here and click the hole and just jump right over to it in practice mode. But this is a beta piece of software, so that one uh, isn't quite working either. And uh, the ball in the top corner, we'll be able to click that ball and inside practice mode we'll be able to move the ball anywhere on the hole or anywhere on this facility and chip from bunkers or um, chip onto the green or just move to the different tee box and just move that ball around and hit whatever shot that we choose. Um, before we go into that, and I'll test that out here shortly. I want to try to keep this video quite short, but uh, I get a couple comments from time to time. if a um, big hook or a big slice was to occur, would this particular piece of software um, pick up the tracer? Well, without testing it, we'll, we'll do that right now, absolutely. Again, we're using the launch monitor for all the ball physics and uh, the algorithm, so I will set up here for a big nasty slice and we'll see how it looks on the um, screen. So, try to hit one big swooping slice and see how we go. That's a big high cut slice if we called it. Not bad, I almost found the green with it. So you've seen that one on the on the screen. We started it way out to the left and that's about as slicey as I can hit it, purposely anyway. Way out to the left side and uh, started bringing it back into the green. Just about got it to the green. So absolutely that ball flight is being tracked as per the uh, data from the GC quad. 
Let's go up and click on the golf ball. And as soon as we click on the ball up in the top left hand corner, we're able to move it wherever we want. So we can move it down to this tee box. Um, if we don't want it there and we want to work on some chipping, we can click on that golf ball again, come over to the mini map and just place the golf ball on the mini map. And uh, we're right up pretty much um, green side. And that's where we can grab our wedge and work on some of that wedge shots. So we have to come on the mini map to see how far that hole is. And we're talking 51 yards right to the pin. So that's one thing I wish as you move the ball around that somewhere in the corner of the software screen here, the impact screen somewhere, it would actually tell you the distance as soon as you move that ball instead of having to go to the mini map. So again, beta software, so all these things could or may happen, but for now, this is what we get. Based on the minimap distance, this said we were about 50 yards, so. Yeah, so about a 50 yard swing. The green uh, does roll from right to left, so we want to be on the right side of that flag. One more. Yeah, not bad. So one thing for sure is trying to get used to the putting on uh, GS Pro. And I'm gonna grab that ball and we're gonna move the ball down onto the green here. We've got the grid turned on and actually I don't really need to practice a crazy wild putt. Let's try to find something a little better. So inside of GS Pro simulator software, is where you're going to want to aim and putt. So inside your simula simulator bay, you're going to want to set up so that you can just work on hitting a nice straight putt inside your environment. But in the software is where you want to do the aiming. So where if I take my mouse left click, I can see that there is a white line that's sticking out from the, the red and black pin. And it's basically showing me how much break as I follow this line down. So obviously with the grid, we can see that it is a left to right breaker and it's showing us if we just keep tracking how much that ball is breaking and where the high point is. So we can figure that out pretty quickly just coming into here, figuring out where that high point is. And once we're happy and we know where that ball is, we think that ball is going to track to, basically left, let go of your left mouse button and it'll align your ball towards where you want to hit the putt. Um, I've hit a few putts prior to this video, and one thing I'll say is so far with uh, very limited use, it is hard as hell. So I'm not a, a very good putter inside this particular software yet, due to um, just basically I haven't worked with it, I haven't used it, and it's not, uh, not that easy. And again, my complaint is, is I don't know how far that putt is. So I'm trying to look on the mini map and I'm moving my uh, aim point around now. So now I don't actually know how, uh, if my lineup is acceptable. So weird, very weird that they're not uh, telling me how far that this putt is. I've looked through, through all the settings and yeah, it's just not on the practice mode. So um, hopefully somebody's noticed that and that's going to get fixed. But I'm going to assume this is about a 20 foot putt somewhere in that area, so let's give it a crack. Well, it was probably uh, around the 20 foot mark anyway. We didn't make the putt, but um, still getting used to it. The greens, this one is set up, I changed it to a 9 stimp. And I find it's still um, fast. A nine stimp in this is about a 10 stimp in E6 Connect. So um, it takes some getting used to to figure out how the putting works and how to align yourself, how to aim, how much a putt breaks based on what the grid is, all of the above. So there's a little bit of work and it's going to take some practice to get that figured out. Um, 